Hey guys, so you're looking for that one channel that covers all things photography, you come to the right place. Hit the subscribe button now. I'm Jade Hurley, welcome to Photo Factor. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about file types. Now, it's a very broad topic, and so to keep it simple, we're gonna talk about just four that photographers are invariably going to make use of. So, let's dive straight in. I have already opened up, uh, I've already got an image open up here, um, and you'll see that at the top of the image title bar, there is the, the name of the image as per what the, 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 the camera has issued it, as well as the extension CR2. Now, CR2 is a file extension that, uh, that is unique to Canon, which is a raw image. You'll find other manufacturers have different file extensions. For example, Nikon would be a .NEF um, and so on. And so a raw image is a format that stores the largest amount of image data uh, as captured by the sensor when you release the shutter with minimal to no editing. If you enjoy processing your images, this format will give you the most detail to play with. So now let's say I've done all the editing that I want to do. You'll see as a result, I've stacked up a few layers here. And so if I want to now potentially return to this image at a, at a later stage for further editing, I can then go down to File, go down to Save As, and you'll see here there are a number of different file formats to choose from, which can be a little bit confusing if you don't know what they all are. Um, so Photoshop tends to be the default option that is presented. Photoshop being a, a PhD rather, being a Photoshop document. Now the advantage of saving it as a PSD is that it, uh, it's a native file to Photoshop and it will, if you click this box over here, it will retain all the layers that you have worked on as well as the filter adjustments uh, and etc etc. So that would be the first option. The disadvantage of a PSD file is that you're only limited to two gig file sizes. Now you might say, well, that is plenty, right? But with today's cameras that can output 16-bit files, uh, my camera, for example, uh, a 5D SR, when outputs at uh, a raw image at 16 bits, it equates to almost a 300 meg file. So once I start adding layers on top of that, it very quickly and easily can exceed two gigs. And then I'd have to save it as a large document format, which is a PSB file extension. Your, your next option would be to save it as a TIFF. Now, the interesting thing about a TIFF is that a PSD is essentially a simplified TIFF. Um, a TIFF is able to um, provide you with relatively lossless format formatting for image viewing. They're also the preferred choice uh, for photographers when it comes to printing their photographs. The reason for this being is that because it stores a larger amount of image data tonal range and detail in the shadows and lighting. The other thing about a TIFF is that it is a recognized file format across a number of different third-party applications. And so when you send it to the printer uh, or the publication, you can bet they're going to be very grateful to you for supplying them with a file format that they are able to make use of. So the, when you do save the TIFF, if you click on here, you'll see this image, this, this second prompt box comes up and there are a number of other options here that you can choose from. If you say leave it to the default, you'll see that there's no image compression. You want to save the image pyramid. Uh, you want the bigger file options. You can choose whether you want the byte order to be PC or Macintosh. Um, and that's, that's pretty much for most sakes exactly as how you'll leave it. You can also zip the file or you can save it with JPEG compression. So it gives you all these additional options which a PSD file doesn't do. So the other thing is the, the, the two gig limitation of a PSD file is not applicable when it comes to TIFFs. With TIFFs you can save the file as large as what you need and which is great obviously when it comes to um, 
sending a file that's uh, to a printer that you want to perhaps print re really large or perhaps it's going to it's destined for billboard and you want to retain the maximal maximum size of the image bearing in mind of course when you save when you include layers in the image saving that of course is more data which equates to a larger file size and then lastly i just want us to talk about uh, the the, the go-to option for saving images for the internet, which of course most of us are know as the JPEG. JPEG, just as a matter of interest for those of you that don't know, stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. That's it. Nothing overly fancy there. TIFF, incidentally, just as a, while we add it, stands for Tagged Image File Format. So a JPEG. Um, you can save then with varying degrees of quality, 12 being the maximum, uh, and you can bring that down to high, medium, or low, um, bearing in mind that the lower you take that, the smaller that makes the file size, which makes it easier for handling, perhaps, or email, or whatever, but there is image quality loss, um, which is standard with JPEGs due to it being a lossy compression. And so the, the file types removes any kind of data which it deems potentially unnecessary. And usually for viewing on screen, the average person, uh, or probably most people, would not be able to tell much of a difference. But when it comes to printing, you want to be able to see that detail in the shadows and not lose information in the highlights, etc. And so... I hope that has helped clear up a few things. If there's any additional information you need to know, please do hook us up in the comments. Let me know and we'll address it in a future tutorial, as well as any other information you'd like to see in tutorials going forward. Thanks for tuning in. Please do subscribe. Please do give us a thumbs up if you felt this information was useful to you. And stay tuned. We'll catch you next time. Stay safe. Stay cool.